everybody and welcome to church this Sunday night. Please find a seat and stand at it for this first song. Everyone standing. 284 if you want to use your hymn books. We're going to be singing a shelter in the time of storm. The first, second, and fourth verse. Shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's our rock in him we hide a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rock divine, a oh, refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. That's great singing. You can be seated for the second song. Uh, 98, I don't think we sang this song before, so it's a little bit of a newer song. Uh, first and fourth and fifth verses of So Little Time. So little time. First, fourth, and fifth verses. So little time, the harvest will be over. Our reaping done, we reapers taken home. We poured our work to Jesus, Lord of harvest, and hope he'll smile and that he'll say, Well done. Today we reap our mess, our golden harvest. Today is given us lost souls to win. Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. A day of pleasure or a feast of friendship. A house or car or garments fair or fame. We'll all be trash when souls are brought to heaven. And then how sad to face the slacker's blame. Today we reap our mess, our golden harvest. Today is given us lost souls to win. Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. The harvest wide with reapers few is wasting. And many souls will die and never know The love of Christ, the joy of sins forgiven Oh, let us weep and love and pray and know Today we reap or miss our golden harvest Today is given us lost souls to sin. 
Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. Amen. That's a powerful song. Do you all see those words? I, I was, it, it's so nice. Like, to save one from the burning. I mean, like, it's like we said it's so nice. Like, they're going to burn in hell. It's just kind of, but that's powerful. And the one about all the stuff we buy. Is it where to, do you know how to flip back on that? Hold on. Okay, that's wrong. Huh? Is, is there a way to go back and, where is that? I want to see that one more time. With it. What was the second one? He's doing it. See? The day of pleasure, peace. No, that's not that. Yeah. A house or car, garments, fair fame. Will trash their souls. Uh, see, it will be a trash when souls are brought to heaven. And then how sad the face of slackers blame. Woo! I think I'm just going to preach that song tonight. That, uh, that, was, that was brutal, man. And uh, that was, uh, that was, that's a good song. I like that thing. It was, was that written by John R. Rice? Yes, John R. Rice. I, I wrote it for him. And, uh, and I gave him credit for it. But, but. That was independent. That, that's, yeah, that's no, that's no, uh, what do you call it? Butter, butterfly loving, yeah, whatever you want to call it. Um, so there's going to be food earlier and you missed it. No, I'm kidding. Um. I uh, was looking at the, the announcements. That was that was a lot of fun. Who 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 enjoyed lunch this afternoon? That was that was something else. So I think I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble. I know I'm going to get in trouble. I, I, was that meat that was left over designated? That might be fun to microwave some of that and put that out. Oh my goodness, that was good stuff. That that'll convert a vegan. And it was, uh, and, uh, <laughs> huh? You'll convert the vegans? Oh, you'll, you'll microwave the meat. Okay, yeah. Maybe we'll put some of that out afterwards. And, and uh, that was just good stuff. And, and he, he, he had a whole pig left over. So that was, um, that was unbelievable. And, and that was fun to, for everybody to get a chance to talk and meet each other and, and get to know each other a little bit better. Uh, that was a tremendous blessing. And, uh, and then I, I, I hear a rumor. I hear you were up here doing your, was it, what were you playing? Viola? Is that, Mr. White, is that an instrument? Viola? It's debatable whether that's an instrument. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and Jill got a hold of a saxophone, is that right? Uh, we're going to start the orchestra to have you playing right now. We're not going to let you guys go. They, they always got something up their sleeves. And she was over there with the saxophone, and he had the viola. And are, are saxophone legal Baptist instruments? Are you sure they're not sinful? No, well. <laughs> 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 no, but that's awesome. And I, I heard you did pretty good. He was talking. He was bragging on you. Said you did a good job. So that was that was awesome. Do you play an instrument, Mike? Nothing. Okay. It's it's like me. All everybody in my family plays an instrument. They all sing. I just sit there and go. Yeah, I pay the bills here. I, said, <laughs> I pay for this. I uh, I told someone asked um, my oldest daughter. Most most of you know writes a lot of songs. And her and, and Joy have co collaborated on a lot of really neat songs, and um, and some of them published and that kind of stuff. And, and they said, "Man, where'd they get their talent from?" I said, "It was from me. It was 100 percent, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I didn't use any of it up. I saved it all and gave it to them. I didn't. There's, you've never seen me with talent, have you? Okay, so I I passed it right through, and and they got it. And so uh, that was that was a wonderful time. A lot of new folks came. Uh, somebody who, who got to meet Tony? Anybody get to meet Tony? You met Tony." That's a real estate guy. Yeah, and uh, who met Tony? I'm just a neat guy. And uh, I've been trying to talk to him about doing uh, once in a while, and we haven't done it in a couple of years, but once in a while, we'll have someone just come and teach some, some practical, I don't like to say it this way because it sounds bad, but when I say non-spiritual, nothing is non-spiritual, right? But if, if someone teaches five tips to, for a person who doesn't know how to maintain their car to maintain their car, right? That, that's, that's practical, but there's not a Bible verse that says how to maintain your car. It does, there's a Bible verse for what car to get. It says, and they were all in one accord. Okay, but, but, um, but the, so, so sometimes we have people come in and, and if you're a mechanic, I say, hey, can you teach a couple classes on, on maintaining your car? And then for the mechanic, I mean, then you, you, if you decide you like this mechanic, maybe you'll, you, you know, a lot of times we give them business. It's good for them. Uh, we had a fellow in that, the, the health food guy, um, uh, naturopath. 
And he, he helped the people a lot with the naturopathic stuff and some of the diet stuff and things. We do that once in a while. And uh, we're due, due to have a real estate agent in to teach you guys a lot of stuff that you don't really realize. Um, I, you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell every one of you right now, just, just for fun. I'll tell you what I do, okay? Ready? Go buy a home. And here's what you're going to say. Oh, I don't, have an, I don't have good enough credit for that. First thing. They say, I can't afford it. That's the next thing you'll say. And I'm like, do you know there's someone just like you that is getting a home? You know, there's people out there making money with homes. You know that? There's people you know who are making money with homes. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not doing get rich, get rich quick scheme, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not your next Amway salesman or whatever. And if you sell Amway, I, I, I love it. Just give me your book. I like some of the stuff in there. But that's not what I'm going at. What I am going, though, is a lot of, there's a lot of it is you just don't know. That's it. That's what a lot of it is. You just don't know. Once you understand what's out there, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of how or, you know, is this what God wants? But we talk ourselves out of so much. Um, and so sometimes I have, I've had a, a fellow come in and uh, man, he taught everything, but he ended up teaching um, on, um, what's that called? The way, you, where you, the way they finance, um, uh, where you buy the house and uh, at lean, we were there. Huh? No, not a reverse mortgage. It's huh? Lease option. Who said? Yeah, lease option. You see, about lease option, and and when you say what's a lease option, it's it's just crazy. It's it's the things that are out there, um, the things you can do to get a house, the things you can do to to make money on a house, and all that. It's just and he taught about it, and you're just sitting there going, wow, this is simple. And remember, he said it was so funny. He said, I'm going to help the class. We're going to put in and, and whoever wants to put in on this we're going to do a lease option as a class and everybody can put in you know four or five thousand or whatever and uh and and you can be a group that does a lease option and so he was putting together a lease option well it was so good he said guys i'm sorry but i'm taking this one he while he was teaching the class he made a hundred thousand dollars and and i think he put seven thousand dollars down i think it's how much money he put down on it and uh and and he's teaching us how to do that and, uh, and he has a real estate group, so you could have gone. At that point, he, did, he doesn't anymore, but you could have gone through his real estate group. So um, I, on occasion, I try to bring people in to teach about some of this kind of stuff, you know, how to do this, what it means, how does it work. Um, and, and, uh, and so uh, Tony is one of the ones I've talked to him a little bit about the idea of maybe teaching a little bit about um, uh, him and a mortgage guy teaching about getting a house, how to get a house, what, 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 what the mistakes people make a lot of times and, and how, how, how come they... They lose out on some good deals because it, it takes a while to get knowledge and things like that. Uh, and and I've, I've talked to him a little bit about teaching that, so we, we may bring him up one of these times. But he was over here for a meal, and what a neat, neat guy. If you talk to him at all, I was, I was harassing him. I was like, like you gonna eat, are you going to eat more, you pig? What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's a good guy. So, so hopefully one of these times we'll have him out and we'll have some more classes like that soon. Um, that'll be a, a good thing for us. Um, Saturday, soul winning, 3 p.m. Love to have you come. We had... See, um, the, I just lost. I'm, I'm forgetting everybody's names right now. The lady that was helping with the meal, she was uh, Sandra. I can't say her name. You after the sur at, afterwards, you. I think you might took her home, or uh, who was with you? I can't say. She sat with Joyce. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. And and uh, that's about six weeks ago. I think we knocked on her door. She's in church. Um, huh? Super sweet lady. Help today and. And uh, Arnold, Arnold uh, is starting discipleship next week with uh, Danny, right? Is that next week? Oh, not next week. <laughs> I forgot. Danny is forsaking our church next week. You, you, you could put a thumbs down on him, would you? He's been, he's been practicing, or he's been doing orchestra with the Russians, and the Russians are stealing him. He's, he's defecting. He's defecting to the Russians is what's happening. And uh, he's, he's going to be playing in their service in the morning. And so, um, are, you, are you gone too, Mr. White? See, you love Jesus. Thank you, Mr. White. And, uh, but in two weeks, I think you're starting discipleship with him. And, uh, and, and we knocked on his door. Jeff, you knocked on his door. You and Danny did. Um, what was that, five weeks ago? Four or five weeks ago? Four weeks ago? Yeah, he's excited about coming. He's been serving. And um, I've got another family lined up to come. Um, where's Dan Roach? <laughs> Are you in the fire eating, Dan Roach? Get in here. <laughs> you, get no, you get no privacy in this church. That's, and then uh, Dan Roach and I were out um, two weeks ago 
and uh, met Shirley, and you haven't met Shirley yet, but we've been praying for her son, Max, and um, she was supposed to come this week, and she forgot she had a trip planned with friends to go camping, but if she's bringing her family next week, super excited about coming, and uh, what I'm saying is there's people who want to hear the gospel, there's people who want to come, there's people, I'm not asking you to go find people and convince them or make them or hold them on the ground or force them or when they try to shut the door, you put your foot in the, if you shut this door, you may spend eternity in hell, you know, and, um, and I, in fact, I kind of ask you not to do that. <laughs> if you do that, put a different name on the track and just, you know, uh, but, but the idea is there's people who are interested if you would just go. You catch that? There are people who are interested if you could, in fact, um, 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 Arnold, Jeff, weren't we at the door? And I said he's going to talk to you or something like that. And it was something like that. Yeah, he's supposed to be the silent partner. And I said, oh, Jeff will tell you. I'm going to knock some more doors. And I walked away. And Jeff was, uh, 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 he, Pastor, hey, Arnold. <laughs> and I don't even remember. Did he did he get saved at the door? Was he already saved? Uh, he was already saved. Okay, that's right. Yeah, he was excited about coming. I was talking to him today. And, uh, and so, so what I'm trying to say is it's not as complicated as you think. Um, watch, I'll show you what I mean. Ready? <whistles> go ahead, punk. Come to church. No, I'm kidding. Um, you, you go to the right. Would you like to come to church? Okay, have a good day. Can you do that? Would you like to come to church? Okay, have a good day. That's easy. What if they say, yes, I would? Can you say, oh, let me get your name and information, and I'll make sure you, you make sure you have a ride, and we'll follow up on you. Now my kids are always embarrassed because it takes me forever to do it. <laughs> what is your name? Oh, how do I spell shakalaka chumantaka bazunga? Interesting. I got, I got a person, I, I still can't pronounce it. I, I spelled it, but it's Cha, and the last name I can't even, I can't even get close. It's, the first name's Cha, and I can remember Cha. And, uh, and, and then can, can who, who knows how to send a text? Raise your hand. How many of you have actually sent a text during church before? Yeah. <laughs> so guess what? You can bring someone to church. You could help them. You could reach people for Christ. It's really that simple. And we go on Saturdays. We don't go a long time on Saturdays. And, and, and I probably should go longer. I probably should push it a little more. But we, we don't go a long time. We go for about an hour, roughly. Um, and, and sometimes we follow up on a couple of people. And then we go knock some more doors and invite some folks to church. And once in a while, someone's interested. And we say, hey, you know, do you know about going to heaven? Would you like to know? And they said, yeah, I would like to know. Okay. Well, you know, on the back here, it has some verses. And uh, who, who can read verses? There you go. And, uh, and, and, and you know, you, do you know that I can't read verses? Do you guys know that? These have gotten too small for me. <laughs> so luckily, I've got it memorized. And I just count on the fact that you're not watching where I put my finger. <laughs> the first thing is for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. Oh, this is the wrong side, you know. <laughs> but but, but uh, what I'm telling you is it's really a lot easier than you think. Um, the biggest hindrance is your willingness to try. It really is. And I'd love to invite you out there. And you say, well, what if, what if people get violent? I'm like, you shop at Walmart. That's way scarier than going door to door. You know what's scarier than Walmart? The dollar store. Do you know what's scarier than dollar store? Black Friday. Yeah, I hide on Black Friday. I think Black Friday is scarier than Halloween. And, and you're out there, you know, that's my TV, you know, and you're carrying them. It's, uh, it's crazy stuff. So, so I want to invite you to go. And I um, uh, see there's a, a children's rally um, uh, for Saturday. All the children, first through sixth grades, are invited to attend the Northwest Children's Rally. The cost is $20 per child. Bus will be leaving the church at 815. For more information, please talk to the beautiful Miss Sarah White. You walk in late and get a brownie, Gabriel White. I'm going to call down wicked people if they like it or not. And we're going to have some of the meat after the service. Did you find some of that meat, Dan? Was it good even after you? Yeah. yeah he's, got, he's got a plate there. <laughs> he's working on it. And uh, so, Dan, I was just mentioning Shirley, the one we knocked on two weeks ago. Um, I, 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 I texted her and she, uh, with Max. We prayed for Max's stomach. And uh, she said she couldn't make it this week, but for sure coming next week. And so that'll be a lot of fun. So, um, Does anybody remember Daryl, who sits right where Danny was, or where Danny, where Gabriel is? 
and uh, Daryl's wife passed away, Arliss. Um, I said, Daryl, I, I never did ask you, how'd you, how'd you end up coming to church? At the funeral we were talking. And, uh, and he's trying to get back. He's got to get an oxygen tank that will that'll last that long. He says, uh, he said, that Dan Roach guy. I said, really? He says, yeah, he knocked on my door. And he said, would you like to come to church? And I said, well, yeah, I've been out a little bit. I can't get to my regular church, and you're closer by, and I might go. And then, man, he was bold. He just looked at me and said, do you know for sure if you're going to heaven? And I thought, well, this guy means business. And uh, he said, I like that. And he said, so, he said, yeah, I'm saved, and, and, and I'm going to go to that church. And that's, that's why he came. Now, let me tell you something. If Dan Roach can get people to church, <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> just, you said I was going to throw him under the bus. <laughs> you can do it. You just. Huh? I'm saying I didn't know you, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, so, so I want to invite you. You can, you can reach people, and they, and they want to be reached. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for you to argue and win an argument. Now, if someone wants to know the Bible and you want to teach them, that's great and meet them and talk to them about the Bible, talk about the Word of God. But we're not out there to, to, to win an argument and come back and brag about how, guess what I told them, you know. And uh, I, that's, that's just not, not the objective. Um, the objective is, is we have enough people who are interested. We need to find them and bring them in and minister to them. Um, Skyview Orchestra, we mentioned that. Is there a way we could just have Jill just come down every Sunday and we could start the orchestra? We need a saxophone. You're the only saxophone player we'd have. And so... Oh, do you play sax? Who, who's the other one? Five saxophone saxophones, plaxophones. Oh my goodness! Who are the five? Hold on a second, Keely. How you doing, girl? The whole church is just talking about you. We were bragging on you, though. You play saxophone? Yes. Are you good at it? See, so if we do the orchestra, can you do the saxophone? Yes, yeah, so we, we'll start an orchestra just for you. So if we start the orchestra, it's just for you and Jill. And you guys are both that. Uh, we're going to have a whole saxophone section. I see it up here. Like, er, er, er. No, I'm just kidding. I just, I don't know if you have to do that with a saxophone. <laughs> but, but that's awesome. So we're, we're looking forward to it. I talked too long in announcements. I'm sorry. I need to, hey, don't you shake your head yes. And uh, you see him picking on me tonight? Do you all see that, how he's been picking on me? I'm cutting his hair tonight. You're going to see what the, you know, who knows what a reverse mohawk is? Okay. <laughs> Come on up, Danny. <laughs> Please stand for this last song. Uh, 293, if you want to use your hymn books, uh, first, second, and third verse of Jesus Paid It All. First, second, and third verse. 293. I hear. The Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Though now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leopard spots and melt a heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For nothing good had I, may I stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white. 
white as snow. Amen. You may be seated. This time we uh, uh, have an offering time, and, and I'm just getting tempted. You know, I can tell you this. I'm getting so tempted to pass that offering plate again. Who remembers what happened last time I passed the offering plate? Giant COVID outbreak. I mean, all across. I mean, it wasn't just here. It was across America. So if we get an offering plate here, we're going to be ground zero for the next COVID outbreak in America. <laughs> and, um, but but I, I just, there's something about passing an offering plate. But I'll tell you what I like about that is this. I like having a reminder to be a giver. You can go soul winning every Saturday and not be a soul winner. Let me say that again. You can go soul winning every Saturday and not be a soul winner. A soul winner is someone who's conscious to win people to Christ, conscious to the Holy Spirit leading them. Uh, Brother Tim Rasmussen said something that I just loved. He said, every day I either try to witness someone or at least pass out a track. He says, it's not that, I, that I'm always going to see someone saved. He says, but I, it keeps me conscious of souls all the time. If I sit next to somebody, God may be wanting me to witness to them, and I need to be conscious. This person can go to heaven or to hell, and I need to make sure they have the gospel. And um, and and so uh, Saturday is is the reminder that keeps you soul winning and reminds you you're supposed to be winning souls. That's that's what it, it does. It's one of the things it does. And um, and um, what's it called? Uh, offering plates. That an offering time is a reminder you're supposed to be a giver, not just a church, by the way. A giver. Isn't that horrible? I'm like, 10%. Man, they want 10%. And an offering. And an offering. And give to other people. So when, does it, when does it end? No, there's an end. <laughs> you're alive and you're breathing and you have the nature of God. God's a giver. And, and you'll and you be a giver. And it doesn't have to just, it's not just money, it's time, effort, it's a lot of other things. But, but God is a giver. And, uh, and this is an opportunity to give. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to bless the offering. Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to give back a portion of that which you've given us. Your kindness, Lord, your love is so incomprehensible. We just ask that you bless. Bless us as we give. Bless us as we serve. And bless the, uh, And help us to be a people who can give more and even have more rewards. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Good ending. That was a good ending, buddy. And uh, I appreciate it being faithful and, and, and having a place to start with that. And uh, Bruce, I just noticed something. You walk in, and there's this mean-looking guy, and then all these nice people follow in after you. These sweet-looking... <laughs> the sweetest family right there. <laughs> if you have your Bible, turn to Proverbs uh, 22. Proverbs 22. And... Um, so um, I'm going to tell you right now, see, see this much of my message? You all see that? You see how much is there? Okay. It, it, this is there's point number seven right here. Okay. You, you all owe me right now because I'm, I'm going to give you a break today. And that part of the <laughs> I was praying about it. I got a five-hour message for tonight. Um, I'm doing a study uh, and, and then preaching also on, on uh, prudence. Prudence. And, uh, and we're talking about prudence, but... But as I did this, I, I, I felt like the Lord's leading me just to, just to um, keep it simple, 
saint, everybody that, that kiss, keep it simple, saint, isn't that how they teach you that sales, saint, saint, that's what they say, Larry, saint, yeah, <laughs> not silly, sweetheart, there we go, all you, all you good people, <laughs> that's not how I learned it, but um, there we go, and so Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3. The Bible says this, A prudent man perceiveth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Proverbs 22, verse 3. A prudent man perceiveth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for your word. Now, Father, we need your spirit to speak to our hearts to help us to receive your word, to enfold it into our lives and to be changed. So we yield to you today. And we ask that you do the work that only you can in our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to need some help here in a second. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. You're going to go for a walk down the street. And uh, when you go for a walk down the street. Let's see. Maybe we got a pocket knife that's bigger than this one. Bigger than this. Right. Oh, right. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Hey, what? Uh, I'll tell you this. Ready? What? Time to take up the offerings. <laughs> I like this. This is a comb, isn't it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> talking about reverse mohawk. <laughs> All right, hey, come here, gangster. Come on. Hey, you're not quite a gang. Take the jacket off. Gangsters don't wear jackets like that. Huh? Okay, I'll try to stab. Okay, give me, give me your tie. Give me your tie. That's all he's taking off, folks. Don't get worried. It's just it's, it's, that, that's, oh, that's good enough right there. There we go. He's a gangster. And uh, that's what gangsters look like. They wear ties like that. And uh, this is Danny the gangster. And come here, gangster. All right. Take your knife. <laughs> oh, it's this end. Okay. Hold that. Are you ready? Don't kill me. Give me behind the tree. Hide behind the tree. This is what gangsters look like in uh, in Seattle, right? In, in the Seattle area, that's what they like. Tacoma. When I when I'm in t t Tacoma and I call it Seattle, everybody gets angry with me. Like Tacoma's not Seattle. I'm like, that's you sound just like the Seattle people. Anyways, uh, but but they, they, that's what that's what Seattle looks like. There's 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 trees and there's gangsters that wear that wear ties and and that's exactly what Seattle looks. Don't tell me that, that's what, that, that's Puyallup is what that is. That's, <laughs> except for you'd have cowboy boots on. That's the only difference. All right. So, so then I'm just walking along in life, right? And, and I walk like you walk. You know, you walk down the street. And usually when you're walking down the street, you're kind of like. <laughs> is Gideon going to come when I started whistling? <laughs> they smuggled the dog in church. You know, the Bible says without our dogs. You know, it says that, right? Without. <laughs> You know, you know what I think about people who smuggle their dog in church? Go check my office. Yeah, my dog's in my office. I smuggled her into church. <laughs> but I don't let her in the, in the auditorium. Look at that. that. The dog even likes Jeff. Bite him, dog. All right, no, I'm sorry. Back, back to the, don't ignore the dog behind the curtain. Okay, let's try this again. So I'm just walking along in life. Oh, camera person. Good job. You, right, what about them? Go back, Pan to them for, for emphasis. For emphasis, ready? Pan over to them. Are you laughing at me? How are we going to make a movie? This, we're, on, we're on the internet right now. We're being viewed in, in the Philippines and in Africa and a couple other countries, India. And so we're supposed to pan over to him and, and make a noise. Like, wah, wah. I had the camera do that. Okay, we're fine. All right, so then I was walking along, right? And, and he peeks around the corner, and I see a man with a knife. And I think, huh, I wonder what he's doing. I think I'll just keep walking. It's probably okay. We're probably just fine. And, and, and you go, Pastor, that's not very streetwise. That's not very smart. He's probably not trimming the bushes. You know, wearing his gangster tie. And <laughs> he is over there trimming the, he's trimming leaves off and he's rolling them and smoking them is what he's doing. And so, so, so <laughs> and no, it would work. The, the plastic leaves, it would work. All right, so, so then you, you, you just walk up now. Now what's going to happen to me if I just, just guess. Any three, anybody guess? What's gonna, would you all guess? Anybody give me a guess? What's going to happen to me? I can die. Thank you very much. Now, some people have a bulletproof vest. I have a bulletproof, a, a stabbing-proof stomach. You have to have at least a six-inch blade to get through the fat. All right, so, but but no, I, I, this could be a bad news. He's probably going to mug me, right? 
And, uh, and I'll tell you a little secret. What? If you see an independent Baptist with a shirt and tie, don't waste your time mugging them. They don't have anything. It's like uh, Judy asked today, she said, I'm leaving the church. I, we need to lock it up. For what? What are they going to steal in this church? This pew? They might steal my piano. They might steal it. Yeah, no, they're giving away free on Craigslist now. No. I'm like, we don't, we don't have anything in here they can steal. Gabriel? No. Okay, so, so I just keep going on in life. Put the blade away for a second. Oh, for, wait, show them first. Show everybody. <laughs> he just doesn't look intimidating, does he? He's like, I'm going to mug you. <laughs> you are the nice, sir, I need to mug you. The nicest kid that ever mugged you, isn't it? And, uh, and uh, so keep the blade in, okay? And, and I come around the corner, and he goes, boop, give me your money. Stab, stab, stab. Oh, that's a whole other joke. We won't get into that. Okay. Now, now hold, hold that for a second. Now, the Bible says the prudent, prudent man, for see, prudent, we, we don't use that word very often. Sir, you are prudent. Don't say that again. Um, that's, that's, it's not a prudent. It, it describes what prudence is in the Bible, right? So, so a prudent man is walking down the street. A guy steps out who looks obviously like an alcoholic. Step out from behind the tree and, and put the knife away. Put, put the blade in. Hold the blade in the air and flip it out. <laughs> right? In a real knife fight, he would have been dead, wouldn't he? <laughs> I'm like, he's like, I'm going to take you. 1,001, 1,002, 1,000. <laughs> it's like, he's, he's, our, he's our church security, by the way, so you're in trouble. All right, he steps out. A prudent man foreseeth evil. Hmm. In my great intelligence, I think that it might be a good thing not to walk this direction down this dark alley. And he, and he hideth himself. Let's, let's go the other way. Let's, let's not deal with this. Let's, let's, let's leave him there and me the other direction. Um, and in reality, there's times to run. The best fight you ever fought was the one you ran away from. There's only one way to find out if you're going to lose. And that's to lose. And so, um, so the Bible says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Now, the thing is, we we'd use a ridiculous illustration that isn't that ridiculous, by the way. You'd be surprised how many people have been trained uh, I don't judge people. For all I know, that's a wonderful person right there. And other people call them a drug addict. You know, if you're hiding behind a tree and you've got clothes on weird parts of your body and you pull out a switchblade, I judge you. Just, Pastor, you shouldn't judge people. I do. And by the way, the Bible actually does say to judge people. It says, sit not in the counsel of the ungodly. How are you going to know if they're ungodly unless you judge them? No one standeth in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. How are you going to know if they're sinful or scorner unless you judge them? When it says don't judge people, here's the funniest thing. The group that says don't judge people are the, are the worst offenders. Because it says, when it says don't judge people, what it's saying is you don't judge whether they're going to go to heaven or hell or whether they're really saved. That's God's job. Okay? And that's what it's actually saying. And the group that always says don't judge people are the people who are always like, you're not really saved. I can tell because you're wearing a yellow shirt. You know, I, I used to wear yellow shirts. You know what happened? I grew. And I, I look like an egg yolk when I do it, so I don't do it anymore. Right? So, <laughs> so if you get big, but don't wear a yellow shirt. Right? It's just a hint for you. Um, that's fashion for anybody that needs to know some fashion um, tips. So, so I'm not going to judge. I, I, I'm a trusting person. <laughs> I, I am too. I trust that he's going to take my wallet. And I trust that he's willing to stab me for that wallet. Now, now stay with me for a second. So if you're not prudent, and you, you, you don't foresee the evil, and you don't hide yourself from it. You don't protect yourself from it. Now, this is a pretty blatant illustration, but it, it can be subtle at times, too. You go ahead and put the blade away. Keep the hand away from the switch, and I take the blade. There we go. Give, give our gangster a big hand, would you? Thank you, Ray, very much. Yeah. Okay, they're not illegal. He sells them online if you'd like to buy one after the service. And thank you very much. And, and uh, that is kind of cool. <laughs> my, my son has a butterfly comb. He's a... And, uh, um, and I, all right, so, um, Ray, I don't think the comb's going to do you any good. Stick to the knife. 
You know, use it for a car. Yeah, Ray just shaves his head. <laughs> so watch this. The ability to detect patterns of behavior in yourself or in other people is prudence. Let me say that. The ability to detect patterns of behavior in yourself and other people is prudence. Um, to, to, to see, to look ahead and say, um, yeah, and by the way, when you're not prudent and you meet someone who is prudent, you think that they're mind readers. Um, I, I'll pick on you for a second, Danny. The, once in a while I'll say, Danny, what? If you walk away from that, that uh, cup you left there, you're going to forget about it. And, you, and he goes, no. I, and they, you, know, you get determined. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to forget this one. He walks away. I'm not going to forget squirrel. Now, I know that because I am the same way. And I know me. If you say, Pastor, will you pray for this? I go, let's pray. But Pastor, this is so important. My, my grandmother's dying. Would you pray for it? It might be so important, but the next squirrel I see, I will forget it. So I know me. I can look ahead at my behavior, and I can predict it. And, and I can predict in that particular area, Danny, unfortunately, got my ADD and got his mom's intelligence. That's a, a, lucky for him. And, uh, but he got my ADD. So, so he, I can say, Danny, you're going to forget that cup. And by the way, I say, hey, it's, 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 I'm not going to say anything to you. you know, but, but tomorrow, if the cup is, is, is not there, I'll give you a dollar. And I'll come in tomorrow. And, and, and sometimes he gets it. I mean, he doesn't, but he's determined at that point, right? And then, and then he'll come back and he'll be like, hey, Danny, what? Is this your cup? And he'll say, is my dad stupid? No, <laughs> but, but he'll, he'll be, is this your cup? Now you say, why? It, it, prudence is, is what, let me say it again. Prudence, um, one, one thing of prudence is the ability to detect patterns of behavior in yourself or in others. Do you know certain things affect you differently? Have you ever stopped? And by the way, with young people, very often, I, this is what I do. I just teach them how to, how to learn themselves. You know the Bible talks about counseling yourself? David, um, what's the term he used? Uh, David uh, consulted with himself, I think was the term, and, uh, or comforted himself. He's, I think he consulted with himself. King David, you counsel with yourself. Um, you know what you're going to do. And if you don't, let me help you with something. What? Everybody around you does. Just listen. What do you mean? Okay. I'm going to turn the other way so I don't get anybody in trouble, right? <laughs> If the family tells you 30 minutes early for the family party because they know you're going to be 30 minutes late, you're predictable. I don't want to look around the room because that's, that's probably about a third of the people in the room. There's the early people and there's the late people. You follow me? If everybody in your family knows that you're going to be 30 minutes late, you're predictable. Now, you might feel better by denying it all the time, but you know what they know? They know you're going to deny it. So, so no, no, there's a, there's a thing, um, and, and uh, I forgot what it's called, but, but okay, when I golf, okay, I, well, I don't really golf, I hit a ball, and, and I don't even actually do that well. Sometimes I don't even hit the ball. I mean, everybody's watching, I, I learned how to get my hands, you know, and you go like this back and forth, I don't know why you have to go back and forth, you take it up like this, and you go, Ugh. that was my practice, <laughs> and I've actually hit a ball backwards. I did. People were ducking. I don't know how I did it. I would love to be able to do that on purpose. I swung it this way, and it went off that way. And I was, <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was, it was incredible. But, but I, but I, so, so I, when I golf, and when I actually hit the ball really hard, if I really try to hit it hard, I think it's called a slice, where it flies out, then it does that. Okay? Well, I don't know how to fix it, and I really... I'm not a golfer. I mean, if, if I was doing it for money or I really wanted to get into golfing, I've had some people show me, and I, and I kind of have an idea how to fix it, but I, I, I'm not that good at it. But what I do know is I do know that when I hit a ball really good and straight, it'll go at the end. You with me so far? So if the fairway's there, I hit it there. And there, I go, whoosh. Everybody goes, oh, man. I go, uh-uh, that's good. No, man, it's, it's don't on the fairway. <laughs> Nothing. But I think it's called a dog leg. I love those when the when they go, the fairway goes down and goes like this. Dog legs. I'm like they built this one for me, folks. <laughs> this is the one place where I look good, right? But the thing is, is I can play the game because I'm predictable. 
I can, if I can hit that shot all the time, I can stay and play with other people who actually know how to play. You'll find that a guy that can hit a straight ball off the, off the tee, and, and it only goes 100, 150 yards, which isn't going to impress anybody, but he can hit it straight every time, he'll win more games. Now, I am like many of you who've, who've tried to golf. You ready for this? I don't want to win. I want to have that super shot that I can talk about. <laughs> so <I'm, laughs> if one time I hit that ball and it goes, you know, 250, 300 yards straight and lands on the green, I'd be like, I'm done for the day. That's what I was here for today for. That's all I know how to do. But a prudent man learns patterns and they foresee it and they know what's going to happen. Prudent person. Um, if you wonder if you have patterns, ask your spouse. Sarah, if I'm working on the car and I say it's going to be 10 minutes, that's not, she laughed. She laughed. That's, shh, she's supposed to honor your husband. <laughs> Give me a rough estimate of time what 10 minutes means. Yeah. <laughs> So 10 minutes might be an hour, five minutes might be two hours, you know. Um, we, we don't know for sure. Now, am I consistent about that? Sarah, am I consistent about that? Yeah, always a long time. She knows that. Stay with me. So if you don't know yourself, you'd be amazed that your spouse might know you. Now, if you're constantly telling your spouse, that's not true. Maybe you should consider just a little bit that it might be true. Oh, you can walk out if you want, Jeff. I don't care if you're offended. I don't <laughs> yeah, he's sticking his tongue at me. So, <clears throat> stay with me then. A prudent man foreseeth the evil, now stay with me, and hideth himself. So my family, growing up, was known as that family that always showed up late. Okay? We were that family. And we always had a reason. And, and I did not outgrow that. I, 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 was the, I was the guy that you knew would always show up late. I was always 15 to 30 minutes late, consistently. I, I, when I was on time, it was because I just rolled into the parking lot on time. It wasn't that I was in here ready to go and, and, and on time. I rolled into the parking lot on time, and I considered that on time. You all with me so far? Now, um, one day I learned this principle. Prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. I can be consistently 15 minutes late, but I'm consistent. And when I'm late, late for me, I'm 30 minutes late. That's, that's late, late for me. So you know what I did? What? I decided to be there 30 minutes early. If church starts at 10 o'clock, and I need to be there at 10 o'clock, I'm going to be there at 9.30. Now, do I get there at 9.30? Nope. To this day, I'm late. I can be consistently late. I've, I've never really overcome that. But a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. So as far as you're concerned, I'm 15 minutes early. When I've really blown it. You know, this morning was a horrible morning for the printers. They are demon-possessed. I'm casting them out. <laughs> I'm, I mean, those things. The first one uh, uh, ran out of ink, and that, that was when I was doing stuff for the funeral. So I went to the second one. We have a backup one, and that one was just, it just decides I'm not going to work. And I called Brother Gabriel up, and he says, it's super simple. Ah, he's like frustrated. He's like, all you have to do is stand on your head, gargle peanut butter, pull the cord out, spin three times, do the hokey pokey, push a button, turn it off and on, run outside, run inside, uh, do a hula dance, and then it'll be working fine. And, and he does it, you know, not the hula dance part, I make him go home for that. But um, he, I mean, he can get the thing, so we barely get the thing working. I can't seem to get, this morning I was fighting with it all morning. And I, and, and I know I have printer problems, so I have a printer down. But I have a backup printer. That printer's down. I have a third backup printer. <laughs> when I was doing the funeral and I was getting some stuff done, I went to my third backup printer and the cord was missing. That's the point I was ready to go, ah, who steals printer cords? What kind of person steals printer cords? I mean, who's doing this, you know? Um, so what is it? I know we have printer problems. I, I look ahead and go, let's have a backup printer. By the way, one of those printers is pretty new. We bought a brand new. It's not like it's an old printer. We just have printer problems. Now stay with me. 
the prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. So can you predict what you're going to... So if I, if, I, if I came up, Mom, I'm going to have you do this. If, if I came to Gabriel and I said, predict where you're going to mess up the next, who would do better at predicting it, you or him? Who do you think, Gabe? Probably both. Can, do you look ahead and know, what you're going, know when you're going to mess up and ahead of time what things will make you mess up? Good. That's the first step to hiding yourself. Then you can avoid it. Then you can avoid it. You with me so far? Um, if you're an alcoholic, okay, and you start ministering to people at the bar, and you're hanging out at the bar, three guesses what's going to happen. Take one down, pass it around. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so, so a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Are you all with me so far? Um, I'm going to give you a really neat verse here in a second. The ability to detect possible trouble and prepare for it. Okay, who, who, who's got a tinfoil hat? Okay, I'm going to give you my tinfoil hat moment, okay? So I, what, I, what I mean by tinfoil hat is I like conspiracy theories, and I had to get away from them because they affect me more than I thought, okay? The zombie apocalypse is coming, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I enjoyed hearing them, and I enjoyed teasing people who believe them. I, I love, you know, seeing where you hide your rations and, and all that kind of stuff and, and how you're going to hold off the, 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 the American or the United Nation tanks with your 22 pistol. I mean, I, I love that kind of stuff, you know. And, uh, and so, so, so I, I make fun of them, right? But, but I've been affected by it before, so I, I stay away just a little bit. But has anybody, been, has anybody been here old enough to remember way back when there was a rush on toilet paper and we didn't have toilet paper. I mean, way back. I mean, who remembers that? Remember, you could have sold toilet paper for 50 bucks a roll. I mean, it was, it was a big deal. And, 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 and other things started disappearing. Anybody remember that? I mean, that, that actually can happen in America. Does everybody know that? Uh, who is here old enough to remember a couple months ago when you tried to go to the, the restaurants that are finally open and, and you go and say, can I have a, no, we don't have lettuce today. No, we don't have hamburger today. No, we don't have chicken today. Now, by the way, please, please, please don't be the person that yells at the waitress for it. You just need to be slapped with a wet noodle. Uh, like, don't, it, it, like, you think the waitress is, has sabotaged the American economy so she doesn't have to serve you noodles? You're so ridiculous sometimes. People start yelling at the waitress for it, you know. And, and the worst part is I think it's a little bit funny. And they'll be like, so we have everything. We just don't have chicken. We don't have, we don't have chicken and we don't have french fries and we don't have lettuce. I said, can I get uh, chicken with lettuce and french fries? I'm like, That's not funny, sir, you know. <laughs> and and uh, we were just at Sherry's, weren't we? And, and at Sherry's they had, um, uh, we were asking for different pies. And they're like, do you have the sugar-free Mary and Barry? And she's like, no. I'm like, you hate her. <laughs> You're hiding my sugar free. So, so you guys understand that some things are not getting to the to the shelves like they used to. You all with me so far? Raise your hand if you if you agree with that much. Okay. Does anybody know there's this foreign country called Canada? I think or Can Canada or or I know they just make sparkling sparkling juice. There's Can Canada. That's it. This this foreign country called Canada. And Canada just had something happen where a bunch of truck drivers decided to protest. You all with me so far? Just a question for you. Who brings all this produce and stuff to the stores? Truck drivers. Okay. So there's a chance that, that the stores are going to have some bare shelves for a little while here and there in the fairly near future. Now, call me a conspiracy theorist. I, I kind of hope you think I'm a conspiracy theorist. The reason I hope that is because I'm going to go to the store and buy a little extra rice and there won't be any for you because you're laughing at me. Okay? And, and you're like, well, I'll just come to your house. Remember the story of Noah? Are you going to pound on the boat as I float away? No, I'm kidding. Um, I, told, uh, I told Mike Walway, I said, I'm a prepper now. I got online to learn some of the stuff, you know, that you, I, I mean, stuff you just don't think about. Uh, having um, uh, baking soda, that's huge. You get a big bunch of baking soda and, and uh, white... Uh, um, vinegar was that because um, uh, you use it for cleaning, use it for medicine. You can use all kinds of stuff, you know. And and um, so so I was like, ah, I never thought about stocking up on that, you know. Get a little, I'm gonna start stocking up on a few things and, and try to have 30 days supply. Now, call me a prepper. And by the way, I like those guys. They think of some pretty wild stuff. 
I, I, I just got to be careful because I can slip into that mode pretty easy. <laughs> you see me outside collecting dandel dandelions going, these are good for you. You know, and, uh, but, but, I, but, I, but, but, but I stay with me. So prudent man says, those shelves can go bare fast. If, if you've got an emergency storm coming in, and they say that, that it's going to be a five or six day storm, it takes about four hours for the bear, the shelves to go bare. That's about how long it takes. Um, and, and people all get their gas and their propane and they, they all hunker in. And, uh, and you run into the store and there's big long lines, you know, with, with all the people. And, and I, I stand, I'm going to be standing at the parking lot with my tinfoil hat going, I told you. I told. No, but, but the idea is this. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. So if I get 30 days ahead on my food, that's not perishable. Um, I say not perishable, but you know, I mean, some of it just spoils. But if I, if I get 30 days ahead, um, I have two teenage boys. Do you think I'm not going to be able to use that if, it, if the shelves don't go bare? I, I, they're pretty good about eating that stuff. And it'll disappear. In fact, I tried to get ahead, and guess what? I'm not ahead. <laughs> they're like, extra! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stand guard by that, by that shelf of fair food, and be like, "This is emergency peanut butter. Don't eat it." And <laughs> the prudent man, uh, the prudent man, the prudent man wisely calculates as much of the future as humanly possible. The Bible tells us what the future holds, and if we, and if, and and we go down, uh, and we can go down each path. Stay with me now. Now I've been talking about food and stuff, but, but I'm coming to an end. I'm going to give you a verse at the end I think will be really good for you. It's a verse that helped me deal with anger. Um, um, if you do me a favor, if you've ever had an anger issue in your life, would you raise your hand? Okay. Now, if your spouse didn't raise their hand, would you just look at me and nod your head like, no, I'm kidding. Um, uh, now stay with me. So this, this is one that really helped me deal with anger. It's a great verse. It's a principle in this verse that you'll like. But it says this. The Bible tells us what the future holds if we go down each path. Can I tell you something that actually baffles me? And, and, and this is me getting a little something off my chest. So, so just be patient with me. But, but you, you people are twerking me to no end. I, can't, I, I don't understand you. Here's what I don't understand. Okay, if I said um, Anton LaVey, the, apparently, I think that's the name of the guy who wrote the Satanic Bible. I never really looked it up, but I, I believe that's the name. And he wrote the, the, the Satanic Bible. And I said, he's got a, he's got a, 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 a four-year course. And if your kids will take the four-year course uh, of Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible, he will guarantee them $150,000 a year uh, employment for the rest of their lives. Who would send their kids to that? Then why are you sending them to places that hate God? Why are you paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to places that hate God? God. They hate Christianity. They hate what you're, you're, you're teaching your kids. They tell you, they tell them you're oppressive. They're trying to make laws. You know there's a law trying to go through the state of Washington right now. Bill was just talking about that law. where They're, they're trying to make it illegal for you to pressure your kids not to be cross-dressers and to have sex changes. It's a hate crime if you tell your kids no, that they, they can't do that. It's being presented to the Washington State, um, whatever you call legislature, and 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 those and and you you want your kids to go to a college where the people who are teaching them every day hate everything you stand for. When they tell people who are sexually immoral to not be oppressed by people, but to be to express yourself and don't let people oppress you, who do you think the oppressors are? It's us old fuddy-duddies who said, God said thou shalt not. You're going to mess up your life. It's going to destroy you. Don't touch that stuff. Live right for God. They hate you. If they had their way, me saying this online would put me in prison. Or worse, if they had complete control. And you're going to pay $100,000. To put your kids there and hope it doesn't work. You know what the biblical response to that is? <gasps> when I, you say, Pastor, you're pretty fed up. 
Yeah, I'm fed up. You're trying to give them a scholarship. Oh, my kids can get a scholarship. And then they, they hate Jesus. They hate God. They hate me. They, they're going to reprogram my kids and do everything they can to reprogram them. And I sure hope it doesn't work. Is that the best you can do? I'm going to pay them to destroy my kids and hope it doesn't work? What happened to our prudence? Haven't you talked to enough people who say, I sent my kid to the such and such place and they came back and they think I'm a total idiot? Well, they need to make a good living. Okay. How much do I have to pay you for your kids? Give me a price. If I put $150,000 on the table, are you ready to throw your kid in the garbage? Two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. How how much how much do you want me to give you? Well, my kids need financial security. Where's that in the Bible? But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Riches have wings and they fly away. Rich people can become poor people in one day. You can go rich to poor in one day. Ask all the millionaires who had Enron stock. One day. You gave your life for that. Now stay with me. Now by the way, not every college is that way, but you're sending your kids to these really nasty places that hate you. Let me ask you this. If, uh, would you send your, if, if you sent your kids to school, let's, let's say you sent them to my school, and I say, tell me what your mom and dad teach you. Okay, here's five reasons why they're stupid idiots. Amen, he says. <laughs> here's, here's five reasons why they're stupid idiots. Here's five reasons why God isn't true. Here's, here's ten reasons why you need to experience every form of sexual sin you can before you figure out what you like. And then, you, then you're going to hope, hopefully, after they get affected, you're going to bring them back and say, Preacher, would you, would you reach them? They're a mess. You paid a quarter million dollars to mess them up. That, by, that wasn't even the sermon. This is free. <laughs> I'm just getting something off my chest. I'm like, what have we done? What is wrong with us? They have a scholarship. I had scholarships at secular universities. I remember uh, Cornell University offered me a scholarship for wrestling. Not a full ride. It was a partial ride, but it was, it was a lot of money. I remember someone saying, why don't you at least go there for a little while? I'm like, I'm training to serve God. What do they have for me to serve God? I understand when, you, when you're going to be a doctor and there's a place that, has, that teaches about being a doctor and you have to put up with stuff and you, you're in the world but you're not of the world and I, and I get all that, okay? But that's not what we're doing, folks. We're selling our kids and we can't see it. Go get, go get the tree, get the tree, get the tree. Whew, I like doing that. How much are these? 25 bucks, folks, for sale at Skyview Baptist Church. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to hold that real quick. Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> you ready? Come here. Come here. Okay, behave your mom. Okay, behave your dad. Behave your dad? Obey your dad. Obey your mom. Be nice to your sisters. Be good. Do right. All right. Uh, wait till you wait till you get married before you before you get physical with somebody. Li live for God. Love Jesus. Let's pray every day. We're going to pray, dear God, every day. and and we're going to pray. Read your Bible every day. Dear, I love my Bible. Uh, okay, let's go soul winning. Preach on the streets, and 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 burn. you're all going to burn. You're all going to burn. <laughs> a little more authority there. You're all going to burn. You're all going to burn. Okay, now stay with me. Now, now hold on a second. Look, there's Satan University. They hate you. And they hate me. And they want to kill everything I've ever trained you for. Well, golly, Beef, why don't you go? Wait, don't just go there. Why? Let me pay for it. And I'll take you to football practice or soccer practice or track practice or wrestling practice for years so you can get a scholarship and get a discount rate of death. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, this is your lucky day. Aren't we lucky? Will you take him? Say yes. They accepted us. They jump up and down. They accepted us. They accepted us. Oh, 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 oh. 
And you say, Pastor, you look stupid. So do you. Because you're going to send the kid there and say, hope he doesn't get stabbed. <laughs> I don't want you to get stabbed. Because <laughs> I only pretend to be stupid, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and the prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Have a seat. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, so stay with me. Where is it that you blow up in your marriage? It's the same spot every time. I don't know where it is necessarily. I know for my marriage where, where we get into it. What, 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 is, what time of night do you have most of your arguments? What do you mean what time of night? 10 o'clock? You're tired? A little grumpy? And then someone says something? What is it that sets you off? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't know what it is for you, but you do. If you've been married more than five years, you can write down how the argument's going to go. You already know how it's going to go. I found myself one time. I was running really late. I totally blew it. I knew my wife was going to get upset. She didn't get upset, by the way. She, she tricked me. But I knew she was going to be upset. And, and she had no right. She didn't understand what I've been through. And I was, I, was, I was talking to her in my head before I got home. And we had we'd started our argument. I didn't wait for her. I usually wait for her. I didn't even wait for her. I just started the argument. I knew what she was going to say. And, and she's, I was going to come in the door. And she's going to say, you're late. And I said, well, let me explain. Well, you're always late. I said, why do you say I'm always late? And I'm going to raise my voice a little bit. And she's going to say, don't talk to me like that. And I'm going to say, what do you mean don't talk to you like that? If you didn't talk to me like that, I wouldn't have to talk to you like that. I know this is only us. You guys never do that kind of stuff. But, but, but then, then I'll, 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 and, and, I, and I walked in the door halfway through our argument. But my poor wife, she didn't catch on. She didn't even know we were arguing yet. I'm like, get on board, lady. And she said something like, oh, you're a little late. What happened? I mean, just something as innocent as that. I was like, every single time, every single time. <laughs> if you'd been there, you'd be like, this guy's psycho. No, 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 no. I'm, a, I'm not psycho. I just knew how our argument was going to go. I'd already started it ahead of time. And I was just saving time. It's efficiency. You follow me? Just efficiency. The only problem I had is she just didn't get on board. She just didn't know it was arguing time, and she didn't catch the social cue. So I had to key, cue her in by flipping out like a stupid idiot when I walked in the door. And she's like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> like, I, I had it all. So if you already know what the argument's going to be, prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. We're going to resolve this right now. How did that work last time you resolved it right now? Has it ever worked? We're going to resolve this right now. Open that door. How many times has that worked for you? Never? But this will be the time it works, right? That guy behind the tree, he's not going to stab me. This will be the time I pass by, and I'm going to keep everything in my wallet. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Figure out where this is and jump, jump off the crazy train before it starts. You don't have to do it. You can change things if you're prudent. Last verse. I'm going to give you one last verse. I went over, didn't I? You're all done. Yep, you're all done. So just pretend because I've got to give you the verse because I promise. Uh, Proverbs 19.11. Proverbs 19.11. Take your Bibles. 19.11. Phil, you'll remember that verse, won't you? And this is about anger, too. So you'll like this. The Proverbs 19.11 is a good, is a verse of anger. Anybody, anybody know why Phil knows that verse, Proverbs 19.11? Um, uh, Richard, you'll know why. why. Why would Phil like 19.11 for, for a verse about anger? Do you have an idea? Glock 19.11? Anyways, uh, <laughs> there, yeah, we, yeah, there we go. We're good. <laughs> just, just a funny inside joke. Okay, uh, Proverbs 19.11. You ready, ready to read it? Um, and, I'll, and I'll come back and explain it to you, but... Uh, and I got notes in here. It takes me a second to read it. The, uh, the discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Let me break this apart for you because it's a really, really neat verse. Okay? The discretion, the word discretion is also translated the policy from the root to be causative, make, or act, to think circumspect or intelligent. Okay? So, discretion 
is, is, is a policy where you think ahead. Policies. Um, so the, the school is supposed to have fire drills. Are we behind on our fire drills? Yeah, I was asking Mr. White there back there. Would you just shut up for a second? No, I'm kidding. Uh, but Mr. White, we're behind on our fire. We need to do our fire drills. We're, we're a little behind on that one. And, and, the, and we have a policy. We have a fire drill. Everybody's supposed to do a certain thing in a certain way in a certain place. That's called a policy. Why do we do that? In case of a fire. And when we have a fire, everybody's supposed to go outside. We're supposed to take roll and go, you know, Johnny, Billy, Susie, Jeannie, whatever, and get all the names and make sure nobody is, nobody's left inside. And, and you have one person that runs through and checks all the bathrooms and make sure there's nobody in the bathrooms and things like that. If it's a fire drill. You're creating a policy in case of a fire. Are you with me? And it says being circumspect. Circumspect. Circum, circle, circumference, around. Spec, spectator, spectacles see to see things full circle god is the same yesterday today and forever past present future okay so you look ahead and say huh there's a man with a knife i know from my past that people with knives are generally not welcoming people this could be dangerous presently i'm heading towards a man with a knife in the future if i go there there's a chance i could die i'll make my decision with discretion now but discretion is one step above that it's making a policy that you live by. I'm never alone with a woman that's not in my direct family. The Bible doesn't say it's a sin. It would not be a sin for me to be alone in this building with a secretary or something doing, doing secretarial work. You with me? But discretion is looking ahead and saying, that could be a mess. I'm creating a policy. I'm never alone with a woman that I'm, that, that, that I'm not directly related to. I say my wife, but I mean my daughters or something like that. Um, that's, that's discretion. I don't think it's a sin. It's a policy that keeps me from messing up my life. You with me? Uh, this phone. My, my plan is, is, is um, my, my, what do you call it? I'm, I'm with Verizon. The church plays my, pays my Verizon plan. I can afford my own phone. But because the church plays my, pays my Verizon plan, any one of the deacons at any time have a legal right to grab my phone and, and to look it over to see what's on there. And man, do they have a whole bunch of pictures of my dog to look through. <laughs> you say, I don't have privacy with my phone. No, I don't have privacy. It's discretion. It's looking ahead, keeping myself safe. Every one of these computers, um, uh, they, they can be checked at any time. My, my, my house computer is in the middle of the house. It would be a whole lot nicer to have it in the back room with the door shut because, man, I can't get any work done at my house. You, not one violin. You don't care. Thank you, Danny. Somebody cared. <laughs> Just a little. Um, and, and, but, but I have a policy. I have discretion. My policy is I'm out in the open. You can walk up behind me and see what I'm working on, and I'm not going to click the monitor real quick if you catch someone click the monitor there's a problem if they have a quick answer they've been thinking about it you with me so far discretion it says the discretion of a man the policy the preset policy this is something you're setting ahead of time this is something you're deciding today for what's going to happen in the future by the way this is talking about anger Who, who's ever been angry before raise your hand Gabe's the only one that doesn't have to raise his hand. I don't think he'd ever been angry. I grew up with him. He did. And <laughs> okay. So it says, the discretion of a man um, deferreth his anger. The word deferreth holds off or prevents his anger. So you have anger. We're just not going to let it get the best of us. You with, it, with me so far? And, the, and there's deferreth his anger. I love this word anger. You know what the word anger means here, literally? Nose or nostrils. So it's literally, the discretion of a man deferreth his nostrils. You say, why does it mean that? Because it is specifically referring to flared nostrils. The kind of anger like, you said what? It hits you. It's not a pre-planned anger. Danny, I'm going to tell on you, Danny, I'm going to confess your sins. Don't you play with your nostrils. I don't know if it's Danny was a little boy. It's hard to imagine. It was a week or two ago. But, uh, and I was teaching my boys how to work with me. And I brought him out, and I let them use a palm sander. I wanted him to get the electric tools. And I mean, he was like 
four, something like that. But I'm like, just, the worst they can do is sand their fingerprints off. Then I told my wife, they just let them use it. And I just had them sand stuff. And every once in a while, I'd grab a hammer and start beating on a piece of metal. Grab a screwdriver and poke a couple things. I mean, that's the age he was at. Turn it off. Click. You know, clank, clank, clank. And I'd get to work. I'd look up and check on him. Well, with Danny, I mean, he was like, what is it about little boys? Little dogs are smarter than little boys. You put a plastic bag in a room with a little boy and walk away for 15 minutes. Where is it going to be? Yeah, a dog won't do that, but a boy will funk right on his head in a heartbeat. You leave a boy unattended by a road, is he going to play in the 40 acres of field? No. He's going to be dead center in the road. If you have boys, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm working, my four-year-old boy is gone. I'm like, uh-oh. Jump up real quick. You know, the worst thing for kids is silence. Okay, screaming is okay, all that other stuff. You can gauge the scream, but silence, there's a problem. So I jumped up, looking for him. I walk around the corner. My green van. Now, I know this doesn't relate to you, but, but I have a lot of drivers in my house. And they always put a dent in my van so I can find it in a parking lot. I cannot own a van for more than a month without getting a dent. See, it's, it's a minivan, generic minivans, but I go in a parking lot and I know which one's mine by the dents. And this van didn't have any dents yet. It was my newer van. And Danny was on the side of the van with a Phillips screwdriver drawing in the paint. <laughs> I was not happy. I was what the Bible calls nostril. <laughs> he was... <laughs> I come out the corner with him going... <laughs> he'd made a mountain on the side of the van <laughs> and I come I mean I literally I lunged toward him I was like Daddy uh, uh, uh. <laughs> son daddy wants to kill you you don't know what you did and he was like shocked like wait can't you see the artwork like, no clue. I mean, because we didn't have a class, don't scrape a mountain on the side of the van. I mean, I didn't teach him that. It's just lack of teaching on my part. <laughs> that is extra mad. I shouldn't, you don't, just never, never, never do that again. Because I will kill you, son. Never do that again. I was like, ah, ah. that's called nostrils. <laughs> this, 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 the, the discretion of a man. The policy that he sets up ahead of time for himself, because he knows the problem is going to come, deferreth his immediate anger that gets control of him. I've had to apologize more than I ever want to admit, and I hate eating the crow for apologizing because of if I had taken it a half a step far I lunged at my four year old son and I caught myself but I caught myself like this I had no right to whack my four year old son for something he's never heard of never been trained for and never taught him second time he's going to get whacked but I but, but I have no right. That's my problem. That's abuse. It was inches from abuse. Because it's nostrils, that anger that hits you hard. It says you can make a policy that will prevent you from losing your temper. Not from having a temper but from losing your temper. The discretion of a man defers his anger. And it is his glory, the word glory is an ornament or beauty, to pass over. The word pass over is to get out or to get over or avoid. It is his, his glory to pass over to avoid a transgression. You know what the word transgression means? This is cool. A rebellion. It is his glory to avoid a rebellion. What is it? Why does it say that about anger? It's his glory to, uh, 
to uh, uh, avoid a rebellion. Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. Why did you make a walled city? If your city had no walls, anytime the enemy wanted to, they could come in and they could, they could uh, steal from you and attack you. If you have no control over your anger, Satan can come in anytime he wants, push your button, and you can lose any progress you've made in the Christian life. You're a city without walls. Unfortunately, I, sh I hate to admit this because it's probably bad and, I, and I, I still enjoy it. In sports and higher level sports, if you've ever done any higher level sports or been around those people, there's a lot of mental games. Because if I can get you angry and you do, your, you, you do uh, your, your whatever sport you're doing by emotion, by drive and hate and anger, instead of by, by all your training, you will mess up and I can, I can get the upper hand. And all I have to do is get you angry. And people do stupid things when they get angry. And I, I used to take advantage of that in sports. I'm talking about like, you know, with my buddies and stuff. But I mean, like if I play basketball with a guy and he's, I'm going to rebound and he's six foot three and I'm three foot six, you know, and I'm, and I'm, we're kind of fighting for position. What I do, I grab his shorts and I hold them and he goes, stop it, stop it stop it and he goes stop it I jump up and get the rebound and laugh at him two or three times later because you can't see that the ref can't see that you just, kinda, just little things that when you're wrestling with a guy and, and, and the, the guys just kind of stand like this and you just kind of go like, <laughs> there's nothing really illegal about that but that's like you can't do that you, you just stick your hands in his face I had one one time like ref he can't do that I took him on the mat <laughs> I took him down I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> See, what are you doing? Getting him angry. So he would let go of all the training that he's had and, just, and, and to, to try to bring out the inner Hulk. <laughs> when you get him angry, you know you can just count it down. They're going to lose all their energy. You just ride them for a little while, and then after they get done, it's over. He said, why do you say that? Satan will come at you like an unwalled city and just destroy every, every ounce of progress you make all the time. All the food you stored up, so to speak, all the things you've done because you don't have control over you.